Hi there, in this video we're going to be talking about the issue of estimating the standard error in beta hat, but now in the presence of heteroscedastic errors. So remember before when we were deriving the variance of beta hat given xi, that we had the variance of beta hat given xi was equal to the sum of i equals 1 to n of the variance of this sort of thing inside the parentheses here, which was xi minus x bar times ui, and that was all divided by ssx, all squared. And remember that in the presence of homoscholastic errors, homoscholastic errors means that the variance of ui given xi was completely independent of xi, so it was just some constant, sigma squared. And that enabled us to write this as equal to the sigma squared times the sum of i equals 1 to n of xi minus x bar all squared divided by ssx all squared. And remember that basically this thing on the top cancelled with one of these on the bottom so we got left with our sort of variance of um, beta hat being equal to sigma squared divided by ssx. Okay so that was what we got in the presence of homoscedastic errors. In the presence of heteroscedasticity, though, we can't make this sort of simplifying assumptions, or some of the simplifying assumptions which we made in deriving that particular variance. So what does it mean to have heteroscedastic errors? Well, it means that the variance of our error term, ui, given xi, now depends on xi. So instead of being some sort of constant sigma squared, it's sort of sigma i squared, where the i subscript here indicates that the sort of error variance depends actually on the particular value of x which we're considering. So in the presence of heteroscedastic errors, we can't make this sort of simplifying, um, sort of some of the simplifying assumptions we've made to get this sort of stuff on the right here. So our sort of variance of beta hat given xi now is going to be equal to, well, it's going to be equal to the sum of i equals 1 to n of xi minus x bar all squared times sigma i squared all divided by SX, uh, SSX all squared. And note that we're not going to have any sort of cancelling of the top and the bottom because of the fact that this sigma i can't be taken outside of the summation. So, okay, that's, that's how we would, um, well, that's the explicit form for the variance of beta hat given xi. But normally we don't have this um, sigma i squared exactly. So what we actually do in, in order to derive an estimate of the variance, we sort of replace this sigma i with what we're going to call, um, what, what's, what we call the residual squared. Yeah, so we replace it with sigma hat u squared, and now we don't have the variance, we have the estimated variance, which I've sort of indicated by putting an e in front of the variance there. And this sort of form here, um, which I'm sort of going to surround now with this sort of mauve line, this is what we call um, the heteroscedastic robust standard errors of beta hat. And they're often called other things, they're often called things like white um, standard errors. And, but what they're indicating is that these standard errors are in fact robust to the presence of heteroscedasticity. The problem being that if you don't correct for the presence of heteroscedasticity and you use the sort of original form which we had for the standard errors, which was you know, something like this on the right hand side. The problem with this term is that this term assumes that we've got homoscedastic errors. So these standard errors are actually going to be wrong. They're going to be biased. And biased standard errors means that there's going to be some sort of bias in your inference. So, and you shouldn't be using these standard errors for inference about the population values.